You'd like to create a movie for Instagram that showcases some of your latest images, but you've only got Photoshop, you haven't got any of that motion stuff. Can it be done? How do you do it? You're in the right place to find out, and that's here in the Work Smarter Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer, aka The Design Ninja. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new image just here. So Command N, Control N on Windows. I'm going to set my units here to pixels, and then I'm going to create something that is 1080 by 1080 just here, which I believe is acceptable for Instagram. Although always check because they do change these things from time to time. 300 ppi, I guess, is just fine for that. I've never had anything that didn't work at that so i'm going to hit ok and hit create like so and then i'm going to add some content now you could bring this in from wherever but what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring mine in from a creative cloud library just before i do that i'm actually going to fill this background layer here with black and as i've already tapped d on my keyboard to the default colors for black front white in back all i need to do is hold down alt or option and hit backspace to do that so i'll go ahead and add the three images that i'm going to use just here i'll start out with this one drag that in like so get that pretty much where i want it now i'm going to use stapler accident finger at the top here to transform that quickly by dragging from just over either the w or h of course making sure that proportions are locked between the two that's just fine there and i'll reposition that slightly and then hit the tick then i'll bring in the next one like so again bring that more or less into the middle and resize that now these were made fairly small actually these ones to be fair normally they'd be bigger i'd be going the other way but for the purposes of this that is just fine where it is and then the final one like so we'll drop that down on here okay and change the size of that nicely done there we are ready to go okay so now we've got the files in place in their individual layers what we need to do is to go up to the window menu and all the way down to timeline and that will open up underneath the image area now, as I don't plan on doing any editing to any of the images themselves, I can actually go ahead and change the proportion of this so we can just focus on the timeline. I do want to see the images, so Command-0 or Control-0 just to fit them in at the top. But be careful here as well because your regular Photoshop shortcuts probably won't work in this particular region, so just be careful. Okay, so here it says create video timeline in the middle of the panel. If it didn't, you can change it using the disclosure triangle. You can see there are two kinds of animation you can create here, but video timeline is definitely what we want. So I'll go ahead and click create video timeline, and this is what happens. It creates me a timeline with each layer out onto a video track like so and you'll see that clicking on them actually selects them in the layers panel as well now what i should have done actually before i added these on would be to add a new layer just here now i've just done that here i'm going to drag that up to the top okay and i want to add something on there so i'm just going to get my type tool just for a second i'll just tap t just here okay i'm then going to click on my image and i'm going to type at tony harmer just there like so i'll use command a or control a to select all of that go over to the letters next to the field for size and use stapler accident finger by clicking and dragging to resize that's the way i want it now normally as well of course i would make all sorts of creative decisions such as ooh, what font am I going to use and all of that good stuff and so on but all I'm going to do here at the moment is just change the color to something that is near white and hit the tick then with my move tool just going to tap V to get that 
drag that into place where I want it. And that is still way too big. So I'm just going to transform that down again. Command T or Control T. I can do that like so. And because I'm in an up-to-date version of Photoshop, don't even need to hold down Shift. Amazing. There we go. So there's my nice little property on the corner just there as well. You could add anything else. Just don't make it super big and egotistic. That's all wrong. Okay, but what we want to do now, okay, is have a look at the duration here. And I can tell you by looking at this that it's five seconds long because that's the default here as well. This is one second just over here and two and three and four and five. Now, if you're doing this for an Instagram story, 15 seconds is all you've got to play with. OK, if you're doing it for a video in a regular post, I think you can get away with 60 seconds. But Google that just to make sure. OK, then. So I'm going to go for the three images here, the 15 second in length doohickey. So what I'm going to do is down at the bottom of the panel, I've got a slider. OK, with small mountains and big mountains, I'm going to drag this towards small mountains like so. So I've got plenty of room. And I'm going to create a new video group using the image layers. So I want to start with layer three, as we see it here, the one with the trees inside of it. OK, so this one just in fact, they're all called layer three just at the moment. There we go. Interesting. OK, but I'm going to go with this track here. And then drag the track above it down next to it, like so. Now that's automatically created me a video group. You'll see those layers are now in there. And there's loads of exciting things you can do with that. But that's for another day. And I'll do the same with the layer above. <laughs> Curiously, also called layer three. That will be the way I created the library uh, will be what's happened there. And then I'm going to extend the time of my at Tony Harmer layer just there like so. So there we are. I've got everything I need in there. I've got a bit of type on there. I've got the things underneath. OK, and there's my playhead. If I drag along, I can see that it cuts between them. If you want to see it play, you can just hit the play button just here. OK, and that will play out like so. Of course, at the moment, not terribly exciting. So I'll just click stop just there because I'd like it to gently transition between those things. So what I'm going to do here is go to the transition icon. That's this one just here. Click on it. I'll choose a transition. Crossfade works well for me. So I'm going to drag that to this point here where the two videos meet. OK, I can do things like click on that and change the duration of the transition should I choose to do so. And then I'll go back here. OK, and I'll also crossfade this one. Now you can see the crossfade here is taking one second. You can see that in this field just here. OK, and that's, of course, trimming two seconds away from the overall timeline. You can go ahead and change the duration OK, of the clips there. So if you want to, you can see where I'm grabbing the track edge or the clip edge to be more accurate. OK, you can go ahead and play with that until you get things the way you want. And you can also increase the length of the transition as well. You can do all of that good stuff. A bit of playing with it will get you to the result that you need fairly quickly. OK, so I'll just do that out like so. OK, so I've got all the bits I need there. In fact, it would have been easier for me to go over the top. OK, and add in uh, that time. I'll just do that just again just here. Unfortunately, when you do that, the transition becomes disconnected from the actual clips. OK, but if I just drag that on to these two like so, so I'll choose another thing there. There we go. That's more or less in the region. It doesn't matter if it's not bang on 15 seconds for this one. OK, so now that's ready. We can play a part of that. I'll take the playhead here backwards. OK, just hit play. And there we go. We've got that nice transition between those things. The name, of course, isn't transitioning because it's not on the video group there that is, of course, showing all of that. I'll just stop that. And then what we need to do is get some video out. Now, you can go to the file menu and do that. You can see file menu just here at the top. Come down to uh, export there and then you can choose render video down at the bottom or you can just click 
on this out arrow at the bottom of the interface, render video. And from here you get a panel where you can give it a name. Okay, you can choose where it's going to go. You can choose how it's going to be rendered here. So you can either render it uh, using Adobe Media Encoder or as a Photoshop image sequence. There like so. Okay, the frame rate here is important. The size, but if I just go ahead and hit render, then it will go ahead and start rendering that, making the video ready for me. And then all you need to do is publish it. And that's it. We're done. And I'll see you here next time in the Work Smarter Not Harder Dojo. See ya.